Okay, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining this dialogue, uh, Daniel. Um, mm. Let's uh, let's uh, first of all offer you some space, create some space for you to introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, I'm Daniel. Uh, I'm a researcher at uh, Tampere University, a doctoral researcher, and my topic is using games and gamification for climate change engagement and more broadly sustainability, mostly environmental sustainability, but all of these uh, topics related to this important topic right now. Thank you. Let's dive into the topic. Uh, so first question, how can we um, how can we use gamification with care for the planet to transform education, especially learning relations? One thing that I think is, so from my point of view, and this is probably highly you know, opinionative and personal, but I think that education, first of all, has a general, um, uh, sort of a general idea or goal of creating or fostering critical thinking in a way. Mm -hmm. And when we are critically assessing a reality and our social reality, physical reality, all of the social structures that we are embedded in, when we are using gamification that tells us that caring for the planet is positive for, for certain reasons, it is impossible that then the, the relationships will not be transformed and the education of relationships and between learners and with teachers and with mentors, etc., have to be transformed if that education is properly reflected upon and shared with others. So I think autonomy is very important in this sense. If we are talking about empathy, for example, and understanding what the other wants and what the other things and the other might need, it is then very difficult for us to establish a vertical system or something that is uh, very um, in one way. Um, but I, I do think also as well that for me, guidance will always be important and necessary. I don't think people necessarily learn by themselves, just leaving them, them alone with, with resources without any kind of uh, help. Uh, but I do think that uh, it's more of a guidance than a, than a strict teaching or something like this. Thank you. Um, what are two, three events or people that influenced your research and study as for gamification for Care for the Planet? Mm -hmm. So I think that it's been a very incremental process. There haven't been uh, shock moments, mostly where I realized something completely different. But what I, what I do think is that for me it was very positive to see the practitioner side. So being uh, working in studios and companies and seeing what actually life is in a company where you have clients and you have different, uh, you know, interests. And then of course going to university and thinking more of the theoretical parts of it. But one, one interesting thing for me that is related to the first question is that many times I have I feel that I have learned a lot or even more from brilliant classmates that I had than I did from teachers, for example, uh, having conversation with peers and then maybe engaging in projects outside of the class and this sort of thing. These things have been sometimes more valuable than the class itself. So. I think it is a it is a bit of a process of trying to question all the time whatever you know and it is true that sometimes when I go for a few days without finding anything that seems to question what I think I fall into this uh, selfish idea of well maybe I already know every, everything that there is and then there's always something new that you find and you're like well maybe I was wrong at least partially wrong on things and I think it's a, it's a beautiful process that never stops and that is that is the nice thing of it but I cannot recall single um, aha moments or something like this so yeah very incremental I would say okay thank you um, you were mentioning this relation with the colleagues when learning with the peers. So let's get to the third question. What is needed in the classroom environment in order for uh, gamification with care for the planet uh, to actually transform the learning, facilitate the engagement, maybe two, three elements you would like to focus on? 
Mm. Yeah, I think um, so. This, of course, will will come from the literature that I have read more than than my own research right now. But one one very very important thing that I have seen is, as with many other things in life, is um, having a clear idea of what the what the learning goal is or what what is actually the the thing that we want to do. And this will inform a lot in 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 terms of gamification or games. What kind of system are we putting in place? So. There are certain things that, um, if we're talking about theoretical knowledge, for example, it's completely fine that we make a digital game where people just play on their own and reflect upon it and everything. But other things, when we are trying to tell people, hey, have you considered that um, what principles are relevant for negotiations, for example, then it might make sense that we have a role-playing game where all the students work together and maybe there are different groups and this sort of thing. So that is one very interesting thing. I don't think there is a single format or a different or a single approach that can do everything, at least not with the with the skills and knowledge that I that I have seen around. Maybe you know in the future people come up with. Um, new stuff, but and then apart from that, I think that there are principles that work generally well when we're talking about using games for education. One of them uh, that is often repeated is debriefing. So the idea that okay, we are playing, we are immersed in the game, we are doing all of these things in the playful frame, but then we are when we are done with this we discuss about it and everyone voices their opinion about what they saw and reflect upon this. And the other thing is uh, one aspect that is, of course, integrating the, the games properly in the curriculum. Uh, it's, it's a bit strange unless it's a very um, memorable thing. If we just, uh, you know, we have class and one day we do a session of something and then that has nothing else to do with whatever we are doing in education, I think the proper way is probably trying to integrate the curriculum with, with the uh, playful activity and be, okay, now we are talking about this topic, so we're going to play a game, but then we're going to try to connect it all the time and, and maybe many days and weeks after having played the game, if we are still talking about the same topic, being like, remember how in the game we did this and did that. So I think that sort of integration is very valuable. And another thing, of course, is um, if possible, I think games that extend in time, so they are not a one thing that is played during half an hour or an hour and then it's done, but something that repeats session over session and builds, I think that's, that is great. Not only because it, it works um, very well with memory, but because it's something that starts to get ingrained in the ways that, that we do things. And finally, of course, we, being very pragmatic is resources. If teachers or the people who do these things do not have the time, the resources, the support to do all of this, they will just not be able to do it properly. Maybe they will do something that looks like a game and feels in a way, but it's not exactly well thought out. And I think that is not the fault of the person, is that they didn't have the resources to properly do it. Okay, you might have already answered this question, but let's see, maybe underlining some ideas. How can we learn meaningfully with gamification for climate change and care for the planet? accessing also wisdom, so making space for that, and indigenous knowledge or indigenous science, if you can say so. So going back to some um, social cultural construction. Mm -hmm. I think one very interesting thing is that sometimes uh, so the developers of games and gamification and designers have the skill, the technical skill to do uh, very engaging games and good looking games and all this you know, idea that they are crafting something that is engaging, but there is there is not necessarily the knowledge. And one one very key thing that you said is none of us, as far as I know, is living in indigenous societies and really has a has a visceral understanding of how this goes. We can read books, you can we can you know watch interviews, we can do many things, but unless we have a proper conversation or even involved people in the design teams and, and do this sort of co-creation and collaboration, 
it's not possible. So one of those things would be that opening the design space for people who know what they are doing and what they are talking about, which is something that we don't do sometimes because we don't think of it, because we don't have the time, because we perceive that it's going to be too complicated. But, you know, it's in, in many ways, it is the proper way of doing that if we want to do something significant. Um, then another thing, of course, is going back to the resources without providing resources for uh, designers and developers to do these things. They will, they will of course, happen and, and there are brilliant people who can do a lot with very, very few uh, opportunity and resource, but it is, it is probably tiring and, and it's not going to happen many times. Um, and, and finally, I think one very important thing is that gamification and games could do more is helping people um, making more explicit or think about how they want the world to be. So having these visions of, okay, we have a playful frame in which you have all of these pieces and all of these impulse to create something. And we put that in service of, you know, when, when you come out of the game, what is that you created? What are the visions that you had in the game that could then go forward and become what you want the world to be? And then, you know, start building the steps towards that. And we know that it's not up to the individual to build that future. And it's, you know, it's, it is very complicated, but to have a role in that and to have a say, we need to have some sort of idea of what, 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 what we want the, the future to be. And of course, that will that vision will be refined. It will change. It's the process of learning that we were talking about. But you know, at least we will have some sort of basis. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got to the envisioning part. So, what kind of world community and education you would like to see out there in the next three to five years, using such tools that we already have? Mm -hmm. I think what I would like to see is, of course, talking, <laughs> being being very focused on this topic and being very interested in that, is seeing that that uh, games and gamification are integrated in ways more much more, they are normalized in a way so that it is done with intention and and of course you go to classrooms especially in in early education and th there is a lot of games going on and, and people are uh, teachers are coming up with playful activities constantly but to make it normal for any age and, and any circumstance that you could be playing a game that has this um, that talks about this topic it's not necessarily that the game wants you to change your mind or is trying to lecture you on something but it's but a game that is reflecting different ways of doing things. And, and this is not only for environmental sustainability. I think, for example, there are many games that appeal to people who do not like action or violence or just shooting all the time. And they are more about taking care of others or having conversations. So these things, I would like to see more of that definitely in the next years. And then the other things, of course, is that policymakers and the people who actually can create the conditions for this to happen pay more attention to this and, and can provide the resources, the laws, the space, etc. So then finally, I think the most important thing is that what I want to see in five years is that we have changed the course that we are that we are going towards as a species and that we have you know, done much more to try to avert catastrophic environmental um, crisis, and then that games played some sort of part, not more than they can, not less than they can, just what they can, because of course not everything is is going to be resolved with games, but I think many things can be can be addressed if we use games more. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daniel, for sharing uh, your ideas, your knowledge and the clarity of this format. I think the teachers will have some resources and uh, get inspired and support for their work. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you a lot. <laughs>